Okay, the problem is that a car starts driving down a hill. It enters a circular track. It drives around the inside of that track once and then exits. The question is how fast does this car need to be going in order to make it all the way around the circle without falling? And from what initial elevation must it start in order to have enough momentum to make it all the way around the track? This is a circular track and the car is driving around the inside of the track so at the highest point on the inside of the track the car is actually upside down. This problem is commonly referred to as a loop-the-loop -loop problem. It frequently appears in uh, mechanical physics textbooks and tests and quizzes which is why I'm doing this video. Um, you can also see videos on YouTube of cars actually doing this, and this is a common ride at amusement parks where a um, roller coaster will do a circle like this. So the question is how fast the, does the car need to be going at minimum in order to make it around the track without falling, and from what initial height must it start in order to have enough momentum? couple of points to recognize about this. Um, first is the slowest point of travel during this circle is going to be at the highest elevation. You can prove this using conservation of energy. And if the normal force of the track on the car is greater than zero, that means the track is pushing on the car, the car is pushing back on the track that has contact with the track, and we'll be able to make it around the circle. So this is the critical point in travel. This is where um, the slowest velocity, tangential velocity, is going to be. And this is where the normal force uh, needs to be greater than or equal to zero. And for purposes of answering the question about minimum velocity, it can be assumed that the normal force is zero, and then the resulting velocity must be greater than that computed value. So the way to answer the question about minimum velocity and initial elevation is to answer the velocity question first and answer the initial elevation second question. Understand that this is the slowest point of travel and it's where the normal force goes to zero. This point is also a point at which Gravity is pointing straight down, and gravity is pointing towards the center of the circle. So the direction of gravity and centripetal acceleration are both in the same direction, directly down. So the sum of the forces in the radial direction are normal force plus mass times gravity being equal to mass times radial acceleration. The normal force and gravity are the only forces in effect. In this case, the assumption is that the normal force is equal to zero, so mass times gravity is equal to mass times velocity squared divided by radius. Mass exists on both sides and can be canceled. The result is that gravity is equal to velocity squared divided by radius. Then isolating velocity and then taking the square root of both sides um, results in a velocity equal to the square root of gravity times radius. And if the normal force must be greater than zero at this point, the velocity must be greater than the square root of gravity times radius. This expression is saying that mass doesn't matter. The same answer will be true for a big heavy car or a small uh, light car. And it does vary with the radius of uh, the circle. So the larger the circle, the faster the car is going to need to be going in order to make it all the way around. I've done a number of videos on um, uniform circular motion and optical optimal design speed. And they all seem to have a velocity solution equal to the square root of gravity times radius times something. And I find that interesting, and that's why I've been doing these videos on uniform circular motion and radial acceleration. And once again, there's a velocity solution that involves 
the square root of L is times radius. Now the second question was, at what initial height does the car need to be in order to have enough momentum to make it all the way around the circle? And the first task is to um, solve the velocity question and then use conservation of energy to solve the, um, the elevation question. So the algebra for conservation of energy is initial potential energy um, kinetic energy is equal to final potential energy and kinetic energy. Mass exists in all four terms and it can be canceled. The mass doesn't change. The car's mass is constant. When the car starts this event, it's not moving, so initial velocity is zero. And the legitimate assumption that can be made is that the final height can be referred to as zero, and the initial height is just going to be the difference uh, uh, between final height and initial height. So that allows the uh, final height, represented by the top of the circle, to also um, be canceled because it's equal to zero. So canceling out mass and canceling out the two values that sum to zero leaves gravity times height being equal to velocity squared over two. Velocity is the square root of gravity times radius. So the square root of gravity times radius squared is gravity times radius. So the resulting expression is gravity times height is equal to gravity times radius divided by two. Gravity exists on both sides, so it can be canceled. The result is height, and this is final height, is equal to radius over two, or one half the radius. So what this is saying is that the initial height above the top of the track that the car needs to be at as a start is equal to an elevation that is one half the radius of the circle. So the keys to solving this problem are to use Newton's second law to answer the velocity question and sum the forces in the radial direction at the point of lowest tangential velocity, which is also where the normal force goes to zero. Solve for velocity first and then use conservation of energy to answer the initial elevation question and take the computed uh, value of final velocity and plug it into the conservation of energy expression. I find this question interesting because once again the square root of gravity times radius appears in a question about optimal velocity in a problem that involves uniform circular motion. It is also an interesting question to look at the circle and think about the direction and magnitude of normal force and gravity at different points of travel along the circle. And uh, an argument can be made that um, this is, uh, this solution is not fast enough. I will address those questions in a separate video, uh, but in this video I just wanted to answer the questions of how fast does the car need to be going to make it through the circle, and how high does it need to be in order to be going fast enough to make it through that circle? And it needs to be moving at a tangential velocity equal to the square root of gravity times radius. And it needs to start at an initial elevation equal to one half of the radius above uh, the highest point in the circle. I hope this video is helpful. If you 